Greetings, this is July 23rd. We're looking at a screen from Windy. That's a band of calm running through the center of British Columbia. And we can also see these areas where wind speed is increased. There's gusts in the afternoon and they may be coming from the west, the southwest, and they may even curl around terrain and come from the northwest. There's a lot of fires going on right now, a lot of different area to cover. Uh, I'd just like to take a look at the ones that I've noticed that have changed the most. So let's go first to Oliver and the uh, area around East Osuyas. We're looking at a screen from the accumulated infrared for yesterday, and we're going to roll into the latest MODIS scan. I'm noticing some expansion eastward. I'm also noticing a hot spot that's just north of the Crow's Nest Highway. As well, I can see some expansion northward towards the east of Oliver. Let's zoom in, take a closer look at the heat detections. This is from yesterday and now rolling into today. We can see the hot spot at the bottom of the screen. It's approaching the Crow's Nest Highway. That's on the East Osea side. But up north we can also see these two lines or clusters of heat detection. Uh, they've moved northward and the closest one is approximately two and a half kilometers east of Highway 97. These are from the MODIS Terra satellite system. They do not mean that fire is consuming the entire square. It means that somewhere within that square, heat was detected. We're looking at a screen image of the area around East Osuyas. Uh, we can see that heat detection moving up the hillside in a forested area, and it's approximately a kilometer and a half north of the bend in the Crow's Nest Highway. The wind is currently five kilometers an hour coming from the northwest, and if we look to the forecast, we can see winds with gusts up to 30 kilometers an hour, mainly coming from the west, but they may shift in the evening and start coming from the north. So this was the first scan on new infrared for today. We'll have to wait until the other systems come online and then we can see whether or not that information is verified. Let's jump northwards now. We're looking at a fire that's moved east of Lytton. Uh, it's traveled on both sides of the Thompson River. Uh, it's moved in a northeast direction on an approach towards Spence's Bridge and over to Highway 8. We're looking at the accumulated heat detections from yesterday and now they roll into today. I'm not seeing any obvious dramatic expansion. Most of those new infrared are falling within the existing fire perimeter. This is where a ground report is vital if you're in the area. Go to the links below. Check out BC Wildfire's situation page on this fire. We're looking at winds from the south around 5 kilometers an hour. And if we look to the forecast, those gusts could increase in the afternoon. Those wind gusts could reach as high as 40 kilometers an hour. On Monday, I'm seeing 50 kilometers an hour about mid-afternoon. Most winds will be coming from the south southwest uh, there could be a bit of a shift in the evening and start coming from the southeast we've moved eastward into the shushwap now this is the sycamus fire it's occurring just south east of the community. Uh, we can see those streams of smoke, the plumes heading in a northeast direction propelled by southwest winds. Let's take a look at the accumulated heat detections from yesterday and when we roll into today I'm not seeing anything. Now that could be obscured by smoke or cloud. So we'll have to check when the next data sets come in from the different satellites and uh, it's vital to get a ground report here as well. Winds are currently three kilometers an hour from the southwest and looking at the forecast there can be gusts up to 40 kilometers an hour coming from the west and then in the evening as things cool down they could switch and come from the south. So because of the fire's proximity to the community and its position southeast, uh, if you're 
planning on traveling to the area, you'll want to check and find out what the evacuation alerts and orders are. We're moving southwest now. This is the White Rock Lake Fire. It is south of Highway 97, south of Monty Lake, and southwest of Westwold and Falkland. These are the accumulated heat detections from yesterday and now rolling into today. I'm seeing very subtle movement, maybe half the distance of one of those squares. When we look at the forecast, we're seeing significant gusts up to 40 kilometers an hour in the afternoon, potentially reaching 50 kilometers an hour on Sunday afternoon, uh, mainly from the west. There could be some shifting at night coming from the south. We're jumping up to the Interlakes area now looking at Flat Lake and we can just see the top of the Sparks Lake fire around Bonaparte. We can see the Young Lake fire. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. A lot less activity in the new hotspots being generated. Uh, I am seeing some around Chris Creek and uh, very few around Young Lake now, and only one in the Flat Lake area. We will need verification from the updated satellite scans and as well check for the ground report at BC Wildfire. Looking at the wind, we're seeing 10 kilometers an hour coming from the northwest, and uh, the surrounding area, the prevalent winds are from the southwest. But there is this belt of calm that's running just below 70 mile house, chasms in that as well. And we didn't see any infrared uh, show up on the chasm scan. Uh, that's been for at least 12 hours now. So that may be obscured by smoke or cloud, but the wildfire crews have been doing um, intensive work in that area. We're looking at gusts today in the forecast coming from the south up to mid-20s, 25 kilometers an hour. But then in the evening, as things cool down, the winds shift and could start coming from the northwest again. Uh, there also looks to be some cloud cover in the afternoon, and that may be contributing to some of this turbulence. We've moved to the south central portion of the province. Uh, we're looking at the lower Arrow Lake with the Octopus Creek fire on the east side and the Michaud fire on the west side. We also see uh, Granby Provincial Park in the upper left and we can also see Nelson and Kootenai Lake on the right hand side. We're looking at yesterday's heat detections and now today's. Definitely seeing activity around the lakes. I'm not seeing any dramatic expansion in one direction or the other. We'll definitely need the uh, updated satellite information to see whether or not those areas fill out with the VIIRS when they come in. And a ground report is crucial from BC Wildfire. The wind is moving at four kilometers from the northwest and it almost looks like uh, it's actually being fanned by those breezes coming over the Okanagan Valley and uh, they reach this area and then turn to the southeast. If we look at the forecast on Windy, we're seeing strong gusts in the afternoon, primarily from the west, and then it looks like as the temperature cools in the evening, winds will shift and start coming from the southeast. Throughout the central interior, southern BC, we're looking at wind gusts in the afternoon. They can be quite significant depending on the area that you're in and the terrain that's around you. So please be safe and check with the links below. There'll be more data coming in. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.